Recently I've been spending a lot of time moving images from my Mac to my PC via the hard drives because they were originally formatted for Mac so it was good to look through images that I'd taken years ago. Last year or so, as you know, I've not been able to travel much anywhere in the world so it was actually good to reflect on the images that I'd taken and the countries visited and the countries that will revisit and the planning and places to go again once the world becomes a, a safer place to travel. One of the first files I went back to was Iceland and it was back in 2015 and this is what the basis of this video is about. It's looking back at the images and seeing how you've improved as a photographer but for this video in particular it was looking back and thinking forward again just the next time you can go. But I was I was looking through them and I'm thinking, right, okay, I like this image, I don't like this image, I can get rid of this and I'll never look at it again so I can actually delete it and free up space in the hard drive. But when I went back to look at some of the images, some of them really jumped out at me. And I don't know whether that's just maturity as a photographer, maturity as an editor, or just how your taste changes in photography. So, this video it is quite a long one, I think it's over 20 minutes by the time it actually finishes with this intro and then the outro but what it's doing is it's just looking back at the images that I've taken and in particular one image uh, of the Vatnajoko Glacier National Park and it was an image I shot with the 200mm lens and the Nikon D800 and when I went back and saw the image I actually quite liked it from the first time I'd take I took it because I thought I liked it and then when I got back and looked at it I wasn't just as keen on it so having the opportunity to go back and re-edit these and see if I could make something from them we're in lockdown just now so there's not much else that you can do out and about photographic wise so it was good to really get through these images so this video is an edit of one image from that and I've put other images up on the screen so that you can see just a handful of the ones from the 2015 visit to Iceland. When I'm going through the edit I use Lightroom, Photoshop, Luminar AI, Lumensia by Greg Benz and the Pro Panel by John Weatherby and I'll put links to all these below. I'm not affiliated with any Luminar if you've watched these videos before you'll know that I am affiliated with Skylon but the rest of them I'll put there and just in case you want to check them out because they are really really good and it just depends what type of editor you are. So hopefully you'll take something away from this video and hopefully it will not be time wasted because it is my process, it's my workflow. I enjoy watching the longer, I enjoy the short videos, the medium length and the long videos on YouTube but I enjoy picking up things from different editors and different photographers. I think that's what it's all about. It's picking up what you need and using it. Uh, to improve your photography. There's lots of people I watch on YouTube and there's lots of people that I grab things from as well and that's what I think creates a maturity as you as an editor and a photographer. So hopefully you will take something away from this video and I haven't wasted your time because I know time is precious. So without further ado, I'll jump straight into editing this image of Vatnajoko Glacier. Okay, so this is the original image and as you see here, it was shot with a 200mm lens f 960mm and what I was aiming for with this image was a slightly panoramic shot and it's just the distance away, as you can see here, that uh, glacier is away in the distance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through a quick edit and just show you how I created the image. It won't be the finished image that I showed you earlier it will be just how I went about the process of editing this one. So the first thing, as you can see, what I did was I went in and cleaned up all the lens spots because I was shooting in the Nikon D800 and I needed to clean the sensor but it wasn't the conditions to clean the sensor so I just went with what I had. I've also made a couple of tweaks in here, as you can see, but now I'll move on and show you the edit. So one of the first things that I did was I went in and I considered how much of the foreground did I want in. Did I want to leave this in with a bit of the mist or did I want to go up even further to there? 
and ultimately with the way I went was I went to a roundabout there with it but I also brought it in either side roughly to around there just in a wee bit because I wanted the flow of the image I wanted the viewer to look here and as you can see with that it's nearly on one of the intersections so that's the type of image that I was left with before I went on to the rest of the edits and from here basically what I did was I went straight into Photoshop right in Photoshop there was a couple of corrections I wanted to make and a few of them were remove anything in the edges that drew me away I probably cropped it later on ever so slightly I'd have to look back at the original now but I just thought for the purposes of this video I would show you that I think at the moment however there is too much sky so I'm going to take that down a bit more just to about there I probably bring it in again I'm just trying to balance out the image it's just so that you've got the visual flow for the entire image and for that just now that's that's actually looking okay for this one so one of the first things remove in here so I'm going to zoom in here and for this process and for this workflow as you can see on the screen I have a few plugins that I use as well I've also got Lomenzia by Greg Benz and this plugin here Pro Panel as well and that's by John Weatherby I use them all the time as well as Luminar AI because they all seem to work together really well so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this area here go in and use the patch tool for this so let's just for the purposes of this video let's just go in and use the patch tool because I said before this isn't the finished image but it'll let you see how the image built up deselect there I'm going to zoom back out so that that's a kind of rough edge patrol of this image right from here and now into Luminar and it's the Luminar AI I use them as a plug-in for this so again to filter Skylum software Luminar AI and that'll boot up the software and allow me to jump straight into the edits that I use within this software but there's a little thing with this one when I was editing this one I decided to try a template and one of the templates I tried just because of the name was under easy landscapes and it was called snowfall and when I clicked it I actually really liked the results it gave it's a slightly desaturated look and it picks out if you go into the edit for me it uses AI enhance and AI structure and that picked out quite a lot of the image for me and it actually it did save me time when I was coming to the edit so the templates in this case although I do prefer, prefer doing it manually the edit in this case, the template in this case should I say actually worked really well for this for me for this image so from here I'm just going to click apply and that's how quick it was in Luminar AI so you're not going to see an edit here with me using Luminar AI too much I'm just going to show you the workflow that I used right from here there's a couple of things that I did for this one so the editing workflow that I used for this image as I say I won't get this exact to the first one because I'm trying to cut the time down for this video but what I did was I used uh, the Lomenzia panel and for this I think it was DM1 so this works in a series of luminosity masks and it actually creates the luminosity masks for you that you can tweak and there's lots that it can do but I'm only going to work with a couple of bits just now for it just to show you so from here I can go in and select everything in white that you see is what will be edited in this case so I'm going to use the whites to pull out contrast in the image so I'm going to go to around here but I'm only going to use it not for the sky I'm only going to use it for the snow so what I'll do is I'll take it right down I'm going to take it down to about there and then I'm going to get into levels and I'm going to adjust it slightly I'll pull it back in so that it's picking up more of the whites the, everything that you see in white is what will, their contrast will be applied to so what I'm going to do now, I'm quite happy with that for this, for this instance. I did take my time when I was doing it in the final, for the final image. So I'm going to apply contrast here. 
So what I have now is I have a curves layer with the contrast and I can adjust this to what I want for the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tweak this slightly and I'm just going to bring up more contrast in these areas. This is where I'm looking at the moment. So I just take it right across just to slightly see how much it affects it. So you can see how much there it's affecting it. But that again, it's subtle to I'm after but I want there to be a contrast in it. So I'm just going to take it to around about there. As you also see, that's created a mask here. So I can go in and I can edit that mask as well. So I'm going to jump into that mask and I'm going to remove it from the areas that I don't want. So if I go into the mask, I go for brush and I take my opacity. I'm going to take it up to 100% for the purposes of this video. And I'm going to paint out the sky. So you'll notice there is a slight change in the sky and if I make sure my brush is a decent feather, I might make a better job of this. Right, so I'm going to go in there. Now I could be more finite with this and I could have selected certain areas of the mask when I'm using the luminosity masking. But I just thought again for the purpose of this video just to give you a rough idea of how the edits went for this. So I'm not taking too long and I'm not taking up too much of your time doing that. So that's me. I'm going to say quite happy at that. And as you notice, I probably have noticed a couple of lens spots still in there, which I should have noticed at the beginning as well. But if you look at the mask, I'll see that's the large thumbnails. If you look at the mask there, you'll notice that I've painted out the sky. I've left it in everywhere else, but I've painted out the sky. And as I said, I could have made a more finite selection there. But I'm just going to go with this for now. So now that I've done that, I want to tweak it even further. So that's the good thing with Lumenza. You can go in further and further, but I'm just going to make a simple one for this edit. And what I'm going to do is I am going to adjust the levels here, just to take it back. Again, we're only targeting these areas, and again, I could be finer. But for this video, I'm just going to go with that just to show you. So I'll leave it at that for this, and then I'm going to take levels again. So that creates a layer mask based on those levels. So let's just tweak this slightly, just to about there. Again, I'm going to paint out the mask. I could copy that mask up, but what I'll just do is I'll just paint that out again. So just very quickly. Now you shouldn't see too much of a difference here, but you will in a second, because I'm going to tweak it just to let you see exactly what it's affecting with this. So if I go back into levels and I change that, see how dramatic that can make it. Now for me, that was a bit too much. So I'm going to pull it back to a bit there. I like it natural, but I wanted a wee bit of drama in this as well. So I'm going to leave it about there for this. So that's me created two luminosity masks just to edit this image so far. And I know there's a couple of hairs down here that I'd missed, so I'll just get rid of them right now. I'll just do it like this, just very quickly for the purposes of this video. And I'll just take that up to there, and then I'll get rid of that one. Again, if you were doing anything like this, as you know yourself, you would take your time doing it. But I really had fun re-editing these images. I'll just leave that like that for now. So one of the final things I'm going to do with this is I'm going to apply a, apply a slight orton effect to the lighter areas. And with that, how I'm going to do that is I am going to go into the John Weatherby Pro Panel. And basically the Pro Panel is a lot of things that you would actually use within Photoshop that you get through a process in, but they're all there at the click of a button. And for this, I'm going to use the Orton Sharp. I like the effect that that gives. I shot this, as I said, with a D800, which if I remember correctly, is a 36 megapixel camera. I, so I, normally when I'm creating an Orton effect, I'll take it around, back down to around the megapixels of the camera. But for this video, I'll just leave it at 60 to let you see it. Next thing I'll do, I could then can go in and adjust my levels and I could adjust everything in there to make areas brighter or darker. But what I'll do is again, I'll leave that at the default for this and click OK. Last but not least is the high pass. Again, I'm going to click OK with that. So that's created a very slight Orton Sharp effect. Do you see the difference as soon as you turn the layer on and off? 
Now that I've created the Auth and Sharp using the Pro Panel, I only want to apply that to certain areas within the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this mask and it's Control and I on a PC or Command and I on a Mac. And what I'm going to do now is jump back into the Lumenzia panel and I'm going to select those lighter areas using luminosity masks. So straight away I'm going to jump to L3. And I was correct, I was trying to remember if that was the one that I chose the last time. Right, everything in white will be affected by the Orton Sharp. Everything in black will not be affected. So I can lightly brush in now, but before I can lightly brush that in, I have to select these areas. So in this case, I am just going to choose Select, and that's created a selection based on the lighter areas. What I can now do is I can jump in here and go into the brush tool, choose white, white reveals, black conceals. So if I now go in and paint in, and I'm going to leave the effect at 100% for this so that you see it in the video. And you should see a slight difference in this. Now I know the areas that it applied to. And it didn't apply to all of them. It only applied to certain areas within this. So if I go in and I am being very, very liberal with this, I really took my time with the last one I, for certain areas and zoomed in and took the brush down and did it that way. But what I'm going to do is, and as you can see again, missed another lens spot. So what I'm going to do here is I am just going to paint in the areas and you can see it appearing here. If I was to paint in the sky, and I'll just show you in a second, so I'm going to take the brush down for this area because I know it did select some of the sky here. And what I'm going to do is just paint in there. Down there, down there. So that's me just applying this to all the areas. And as you can see, with my workflow, this is my preferred workflow. Uh, you won't use all these tools all the time, but and I really like the Snowfall template in Luminar AI. I just think it made a difference to this image. And it went through most of the processes that I would normally do when I was editing in Luminar AI. As I say, I use that as a plugin most of the time. Uh, very, very rarely just use it as a main editor because it doesn't work entirely for my workflow. That's not to say at all that it's a not any use, you use the tools that you can use to get the effects that you desire within your final images, right? And I'll just paint a wee bit in there. Right, if I flick this on and off, hopefully you'll see the slight difference. And it is very, very slight. And you can actually see it jumping onto the sky there slightly as well. So I'm going to reverse the brush by pressing X on the keyboard and it paints in black or I can click the arrows over here. So you can see the effect that that's had with the image. Now it's subtle, it's meant to be subtle. I don't want to take it too far. So that's as far as I'm going to take this image just now. All I'll do is I'll flatten this image. I'm not gonna save it out as a PSD or anything just because it's just a demo for this video. So I'm just going to go layer, flatten image, file, save. And that will jump straight back into Lightroom for me, as you can see, 99%. And then as soon as it finishes, I'll jump back into Lightroom and show you the final result. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and hopefully it lets you see just, just another workflow using other plugins as well. It just depends what type of editing and how you like to go about the process of editing. That for me, that's mainly my workflow at the moment, so it works great for me. And even going back to the older images, and even going back to the older images there, which were taken in 2015, and then re-editing them now, now that I've gained even more experience with editing and more experience photographically, it lets you see 
how you improve, which I really, really do like. I really like those images now that I've re-edited them compared to what they were at the very first time. Thanks again for watching. Remember, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.